Exclusive interviews with two Russian prisoners of war conducted by Kiev Post appear to confirm reports by Ukrainian intelligence and Western analysts that parts of the Russian army are poorly provisioned, badly motivated, and generally treated as cannon fodder. One of the prisoners of war, Asterisk Sergei, told Kiev Post that his unit was brought to Ukraine and told to dig trenches, but the soldiers, some straight out of prison without their own cell phones or adequate clothing, had to buy their own shovels. We had to have something to dig with, he said. They didn't give us anything. They just brought us in, threw us out in the woods and told us to dig and not to go anywhere from this strip because a bird, drone, might fly in and drop something on our heads. Sergei said that before being captured by the Ukrainians, who he was told would beat him and torture him. His command informed him that he should detonate a grenade, killing himself and anyone nearby instead of surrendering. Honestly, we're fed, we bathe, we're clean, we sleep. We're all good, Sergei said of his actual experience with the armed forces of Ukraine. Sergei is one of the many Russian soldiers whom Moscow promised release from prison, a government pardon, as well as a salary of about $2,200 a month, nearly twice the country's average. The whole fourth military company is prisoners, Sergei said, who was two and a half years into a seven and a half year prison sentence for murder before being recruited. According to Sergei, some of his fellow captives have already finished their military contracts but haven't been allowed to go home. It doesn't mean anything. Until the war is over, you stay, he said. The captive was also critical of Russian President Vladimir Putin in the interview. He's got everybody around him. National Guard, militia, military. He's our king. I don't know what else to call him. He doesn't change. Nobody votes for him. His own people vote for him as they should. He has to be removed. But how do you remove him? You think I'm the only one out there? There's a lot of us out there. Sergei said that he fears what will happen to him if he returns to Russia. They'll shoot me. I don't know what to do. Victor, another prisoner of war interviewed by Kiev Post, was told that he would only be working as an army driver. I didn't end up becoming a driver, he said. They made me a cook. I cooked lunches and dinners, and then they sent me to the front. He described a scenario where everyone in his unit was out for themselves. Each man is responsible for his own life, he said. Russia pontoon layer got stuck in the mud without having time to unfold, but unfortunately the Ukrainian FPV drone helped the pontoon to unfold. translated video of an entire herd of Mobics getting a pep talk from their commander, including the promise of hot baths and prostitutes when they return. Братва, мне нужна злость. Мне нужна дерзость. Мне нужна стремительность. И нам нужна победа. Это лесополка наша уже. Нам просто осталось до нее добраться. Не жалеть себя, но беречь. Не жалеть никого. Беречь себя и братишку. Быть внимательными, дерзкими, смелыми и злыми. Ебем хохла, пацаны. Возвращаемся, нас ждет баня. Теплые тапочки и разговоры по телефону с женами, с мамами. Ну, у кого жен нету, разрешу проституток. Все все поняли, пацаны. Не кричим. Выдвигаемся на боевую задачу. Слушай боевой приказ. Совершить марш в направлении пидораса. Присунуть ему в хвост и в гриву и вернуться назад. Задача простая и выполнимая. Все услышали?
Russian civil aviation is on the verge of collapse. The Defense Intelligence of Ukraine conducted a cyber operation against Rose Aviation and obtained classified documents of the Russian Ministry of Transport. The intelligence managed to find out that, in January 2023, 185 air accidents were registered in Russian civil aviation. About a third of them were classified as incidents of varying levels of danger. The leader here was the Russian short-haul airplane Dry Superjet. 34 incidents. In the first nine months of 2023, 150 cases of aircraft malfunctions were documented in Russia. In the same period in 2022, 50 such incidents were recorded. Thus, the increase in the danger of flying in Russia has tripled. Engines and landing gear, as well as other important elements such as hydraulic systems, flaps, and software, remain the most vulnerable areas of Russian aviation. The aggressor state of Russia has serious difficulties with the maintenance of high-flying aircraft. Due to the lack of capacity and specialists, Moscow is trying to reorient aircraft maintenance to Iran, where the relevant work is carried out artisanally, without appropriate certification. As of March 2022, Russia had about 820 foreign-made civilian aircraft, and if at that time only up to 10% of them had undergone uncertified repairs using off-brand spare parts, now almost 70% of the fleet has been put through such service. The acute shortage of spare parts has led to the so-called aviation cannibalism in Russia, when some aircraft are dismantled to repair others. According to the available data, by mid-2023, more than 35% of the aircraft in Russia were cannibalized. Most Soviet An-2 aircraft are currently unable to get off the ground because their engines were manufactured in Poland, but their supply has been suspended due to sanctions. In January 2023 alone, 19 different malfunctions were recorded among the 220 Airbus aircraft in Russia. In particular, 17 cases of smoke were recorded in nine aircraft used by Aeroflot. Out of 230 Boeing aircraft used in Russia, 33 technical failures of various aircraft systems were recorded. Every seventh Brazilian Embraer failed to withstand the conditions of Russian exploitation, and there are 21 of them in Russia. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.